everyone, I'm Cassandra and I'm mom and this is Millennial Mom and in today's video we are here to recap season 2 of 90 Day Fiance the other way and I can't believe we are already on episode 5. I know. So let's get into the video. Last week we concluded with Brittany and Yazin mm -hmm. and now we are starting back with Brittany, Brittany and Yasin. Yasin. And I was very, very, very surprised mm -hmm. by Yasin's whole demeanor, how he was treating Brittany, all because a big bottle of tequila and a hug from the producer. I was just so shocked by that. I understand why he was shocked because see, before when Brittany came, she didn't come with producers and even she didn't have alcohol because it seemed like she had it before, just by the way, she was like, I don't know why he's doing all this. It was never a problem. See, all those people weren't around this time. And even though the show is in English, maybe his parents, cousins, brothers, sisters, someone may rewatch this and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, look at what's happening here. But since everyone was around, like different men or whatever, because Yasin did say the traditions and cultures, I think that's the reason why. He was more upset this time versus the first time. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really give him a reason to put his hand in her face and just doing the most to he me. He was. He was extra. And I actually halfway felt bad for Brittany mm -hmm. in a sense because I would have been like, nope. Just like when she was like, you know, if he's doing that now, how is he going to react when I tell him, you know, I'm still married? <laughs> that part. And then also, I can just kind of see a little bit where she was going with, you know, I'm still American. What about adapting to my culture? But at the same time, you know, you're going to a different country, so you should find out what they accept and don't accept. Well, you just answered your own question. <laughs> but when they made it to hotel and she said, can you get my bags? She's like, no. <laughs> right, he peaced out real quick. I was like, dang, I know you can't sleep in the same room with her, but could you at least help her with the bag? Even in the hotel room where Brittany was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know why he was doing that. I think you kind of do. I mean, you still have to respect their traditions and their customs, regardless if you're American. You know the things that you can and can't do. It's not like she hasn't visited before, you know? So today's the day that Devin, the kids, and her mom are arriving in Korea. But before we see them, we see Ji Hoon at home, still at his parents' house, Where packing be? at the apartment. <laughs> That's her apartment. Well, still, she got the apartment for them, so hopefully he was able to get the keys and stuff, but clearly he didn't. <laughs> He's packing at his parents' house. His parents are kind of like, oh, you're finally leaving this time. Where are you going to? He said the apartment. Who got it? Devin. His mom was like, how come you didn't get it? He didn't have a clear answer for that, but they know why he didn't get it because he didn't want to get it because he's used to living with you. Ji Hoon is kind of saying to his parents like, well, you know, Devin's coming with her mom and she can be, you know, rude or whatever he said. Well, I don't remember exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. I remember what his mom said. And his mom said that Devin wasn't really likable or lovable. And I don't agree with that. I feel like everyone's lovable. But do I think Devin can be a little bit um, distancing and dry with the way she says stuff, like the clear eyes, dry guy, like that commercial? <laughs> I, I think so. And I think that can be interpreted different ways, especially if you're in different cultures or even here. I agree with that. But I also think that his mom may feel that way, maybe because they don't necessarily get along. But remember... She wanted Ji Hoon to marry a Korean girl, and that's not Devin. So the plane arrives, Devin, the kids, her mom walks in, and Devin's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he brought his parents. I'm thinking, why wouldn't he bring his parents? What's wrong with that? Maybe because, you know, she wasn't ready yet. They already don't have a good bond. She just wanted to get to the apartment, get settled in, you know, not mm -hmm. have like 10 people in a car driving together for the first time meeting. It's kind of awkward. I guess, but... The thing that got me, not that Drusilla ran to Jihoon and gave him a hug. I thought that was cute. But her mom, her mom was like. <laughs> and then when she gave Jihoon's mom and dad a hug. I mean, 
I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm falling on the side with Jihoon on this one. That lady is a little rough around the edges. Maybe just a little bit. But she gave them bear hugs. And even his mom was like, oh, the hug was kind of tight. Do you think it was on purpose? No, I just felt like she was trying to be accepting that she's here. And that she did watch over her daughter and take her in while they were living with her. So that's how I saw it. But I was just floored mm -hmm. on how... Devin's mom was acting in the car. Well, that's rough around the edges. I mean, dropping F-bombs, <laughs> dropping this, dropping that. I don't think that was necessary. I mean, yeah, you don't want your daughter here, but this is her husband. That's her son, the baby, and the, his daughter. Well, it's not his daughter. It's his stepdaughter. And they want to be a family. So regardless of what you think, you don't. she didn't have to do all that. But at the same time, as they did pull up to the apartment, Devin and Ji Hoop's mom both were feeling the same way about the apartment in the area. It's just Devin's mom, you know, took the other route <laughs> of saying something compared to Ji Hoop's mom. But that area was looking a little shady. But uh, Ji Hoop should have helped Devin. He knows the area, not her. I agree because when Ji Hoop's mom was like, did you check it out? He was like, no, no. <laughs> Devin probably just told him the place and mm -hmm. Jihoon was like, hmm, okay. And they just let that be that. Yeah, we'll see what her mom says because her mom was like, she can't be staying here. But we'll see if she does or don't. We finally get to meet the sixth and final couple to the show. It is Tim from Dallas and Melissa from Columbia. They met when Tim was in college. She worked at a bar. He said everyone at the bar was trying to get at her. So, hey, I guess that's a good thing. They stayed together. So we have to see where that goes. But the backstory on Tim is he carries his cat everywhere he goes. When I first saw that, I was thinking, oh, he reminds me of someone else on another 90 Day Fiance show. He does. I thought it was Cote 2.0. <laughs> I didn't want to say, but that's what it reminded me of. But he did say he takes his cat everywhere because the cat is now an emotional support animal and he needed to get a leash because he's going to Columbia in the next week and the cat is coming along of course so Tim describes himself as not a nerd but kinda Tim kind of fell out with the wrong crowd and he went to jail when he was young he went to jail for 28 days spent three years of probation and after that, he decided to get his life together. He went to school. <laughs> but before you even move into all that, mm -hmm. when I found out or we found out as the viewers that he only went to jail for 28 days for robbing cars. Yeah. 28 days. Well, that's a whole different subject, a whole different <laughs> subject matter. 28 days. Well, Tim has gotten his life together. He's on the right track now. And him and Melisa still continue to date during this whole time. And it was interesting that Melisa is an au pair, which, again, is from another 90 Day Fiance show, Cult Day 2.0, once again. The thing is with Melisa, she stayed in America. And then after a year, she went back to Columbia to finish her studies. And they still continue to talk and date. But there's something that happened in between that time. Mm hmm And what happened was, well, actually, before he even got to what happened, he brought all his friends around the table mm -hmm. so we can talk about it. Yes. And that was that he cheated on Melissa, and that's why he is going to Columbia. And his friends seemed really, really, really upset, like on the borderline of crying upset. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I know that you're a friend, but. I wouldn't be crying. <laughs> well, what they said was like, you know, she deserves better. Not him. Melissa de deserves better because of what he put her through. But at the same time, I was like, wow. She that, must be really nice. I'm like, that. that is like unheard of in something like this. Normally it's like you can do better. But since she has been in America before, some of the friends have met her at her previous job when she was a bartender or worked at a bar or something so they kind of know her but still the scenario of someone cheating on you and with a co-worker or whatever for your friends to say just like you said that they're upset they're crying on her behalf i was stunned by that information now we have kenny and armando's story but it's kenny kenny is on his way to mexico he's leaving everything he has 
his kids, his family, he is so upset. He's so emotional. So's the kids. So's just the whole situation. And the thing is, his grandson, he's so cute. He doesn't realize that his grandfather is leaving permanently because his mom's like, he's going for good. Say bye. He's just like playing in the little laundry basket, just oblivious <laughs> to everything. Well, they were acting like he was never going to come back again. Well, he doesn't know. He said he's uprooting his life. He may never see his family again. He said he's living on a wing and a prayer. Well, while he's living on a wing and a prayer, mm -hmm. I am too on the behalf of Armando because I know Kenny is giving everything, literally everything up to yeah. come to Mexico. Mm -hmm. I feel like Armando's giving up potentially his family. And I feel like that's like more than possessions to me. Yeah. Now we finally get to see Binyam. Binyam lives in a one bedroom house with his brother and his wife. He says he sleeps in the living room and I just wanna know if Ariella has a place to stay or is she gonna stay with him in the living room? Well, it's not just Ariella, it's the mama too. Where's her mom gonna sleep? The backstory is Binyam's family from Ethiopia, he ended up living with his brother and his wife because his parents died or their parents died when he was 13 or 14 years old. They both died of an illness. No one knows of what, no one knows exactly how. So since he's a baby of the family, he came to live with his oldest brother and his wife, hence the name Baby. Now, he met Ariella, he said, on the way to MMA because he has different jobs. He says he does MMA and he does dancing. Now, I don't know if he teaches MMA or does it for sport himself. No, he does MMA, he dances, and he's a, um, a trainer. We see Binyam on the way to the studio. Once again, this reminds me of Usma. Usma. Turns out Binyam has also started a music career and he's fresh in this music. And he actually wrote a song called Yene Yene, but this time the song is about him, not for anybody's baby girl or whoever. <laughs> he said, dancey, dancey, baby cool, dancey, dancey. And then something else I didn't really hear. I think you said it. Are you going to download the song? Um, I'm going to need Usman to get on the track and then I'm, <laughs> I might download it because it was missing something in it. Because mm -hmm. all his um brother and producer was like, yeah, that's good. That's good enough. I'm like, good enough. We got to keep going. Well, he said he has eight songs in the bag. So if it's good enough, it's good enough. They ought to know, right? <laughs> so he's telling them that Ariella is on her way to Ethiopia to have the baby and he said when she gets here, he's going to propose so they can make a life together. And the producers say, what? Are you sure this is what you want? He said, yeah, she's not like my ex. She's different. She has a nice smile, everything about her. Because they question Bingham about he has an ex who happens to be an American who also got pregnant after a short time, has a baby, and is now back in America because things didn't work out and they're afraid this is going to happen to Binyam. Well, it wasn't just any ex. He was married to her for four years. Okay. It's still your ex. <laughs> and they still don't want the same thing to happen to him. But he's determined that it's not going to be this way this time. And honestly, I'm not even sure if he knows her mom is coming. Do you think it's going to be a surprise? I definitely think it's going to be a surprise. And I'm wondering how that's going to go. Like, where is everyone going to sleep at? Are they going to get a hotel room? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I really see it fully for this couple. I, I want to because I actually feel like Binyam has really good intentions. Ari has really good intentions. But I just feel like it's just a lack of communication and it's just not. Well, I have to say I'm the opposite. I think Ari has good intentions and Binyam wants to come maybe to the States to see if he can get in contact with his son and possibly build his music career. That's just me. We'll have to see. Hey. <laughs> All right. So that was the end of this week's episode. And it was actually really good. It wasn't really boring like I thought it was last week, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, we have some... New storylines, some similar storylines, like a Colty 2.0. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what his name is. I just know he's a 
Coty. It's cult without the E. (laughs) What do you think about this episode? I think the episode was good. I have yet to think the episodes have been boring. Um, I want to see what's going to happen with everyone next week because everyone will have made it to their destination. Some with an extra family member. Some with family members who haven't met. A whole bunch of things are going to unfold and I'm really looking forward to next week. Well, let us know what you all think in the comments down below, what you think is going to happen next week, Mm -hmm. and what you thought about this week's episode. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and become one of our wonderful subscribers. Don't forget to share this video to other people who watch 90 Day Fiance or the other way, and to like this video. Thank you all for watching, and as always, live simply, be grateful.